Hi friends. Let's discuss today about heat exchangers, which are commonly used in process industries. We all know heat exchanger is an equipment which exchanges heat from cold body to hot body and again removes heat from hot body, transfers it to cold body. And we'll try to understand this with respect to the instrumentation and controls that are applied in typical process industries. If you try to understand a heat exchanger, which is a device that allows heat from a fluid, it can be a liquid or a gas, to pass to a second fluid, another liquid or gas, without the two fluids having to mix together or come into direct contact. The essential principle of a heat exchanger is that it transfers the heat without transferring the fluid that carries. You can see heat exchangers in all kinds of places, usually working to heat or cool buildings or helping engines and machines to work more efficiently. The principle of operation of heat exchanger is very simple. When two fluids of different temperatures are brought into close contact, but they are not mixing with each other. One fluid runs through the tubes and another fluid flows over the tubes. It can be a shell or it can be another annulus to transfer heat between those two fluids. Pictorially, you can see you have the hot fluid coming on the shell side and then the cold fluid. You now the entire equipment, the heat transfer area, <clears throat> everything is decided, designed for a specific heat transfer rates. You will see here, we normally call it as the LMTD, log mean temperature difference. The temperature t, delta T is always TW1 minus TC1. When the warm fluid starts coming in and goes out, and then the cold fluid comes in and goes out as TC2, warm fluid TW1 and TW2. So in the process, it exchanges the heat the temperature of cold fluid goes up and the temperature of warm fluid comes down. And this is directly proportional to the surface area where it is. There. So this is how we can understand the functionality of a heat exchanger. Then if you see the straight heat and tube exchanger, you have the uh, tube sheet, this side and that side. Then you have a shell side fluid coming in and you have a baffles at different places. This fluid moves through these uh, tubes giving maximum heat. On the other side, tube side fluid enters into the tubes, uh, you know, and then uh, the, it is going straight through the tubes, whereas the shell side liquid or fluid comes in, giving the maximum transfer of heat. And this is the outlet uh, plenum, and this is the inlet plenum of a typical uh, heat exchanger. Then the, uh, and then hotter after, you know, hotter before, going in uh, through this and then after it, it becomes cool and cooler before it comes it becomes hotter after going through the heat exchanger. So another uh, configuration of a shell and tube uh, heat exchanger where it is going through the tubes and shell side and uh, shell side flow in you know there is only difference between fluid and liquid is fluid it can be a liquid or a gas but whereas a liquid is always the liquid right. So this transfers and these devices these tubes, these shells, it's all, they're all designed for a maximum heat transfer rate. So you have a different types. You have a co-current where both the liquid fl flowing in fluids and shell side in the same direction, co-current flow. Then you have a counter current flow where the, on the cell side, it is coming opposite to the tube side flow. Then cross flow, the tube side is going in this and shell side is coming here. Then cross and counter current flow, we call it as a hybrid flow where the tubes, shell side it is going and tube side it is coming in both up and down. And this is, these are the typical configurations. The operating principle as we have just seen, these are all normally called the fins. Okay, that I mean, this is exactly what happens inside an internal combustion engine uh, of a motorcycle or an engine where, an, in fact, the motorcycle, uh, they're all given the fins to the engine because the hot process fluid is going then the warm air is coming in the process the ambient air picks up the heat from the um, hot process fluid inside that and becomes warm air. Another very uh, you know, highly efficient uh, exchange process is a plate heat exchanger. You will see number of such plates are there and they're all uh, you know, joined, aligned together, tightened together 
uh, where uh, you know you have the fluid going in through this direction uh, and, and then you have the fluid going through this coming to this um, again going here going here and the, you know there are in a counter current type first the it, uh, the cold fluid goes then you have the hot fluid uh, going through these plates so uh, in the process this is the best uh, heat exchange process available you can see here uh, then you, know, you have the hot fluid going in here and then cold fluid coming through these plates different plates and they are these all these plates are stacked together in order to give maximum heat transfer rates so uh, hot fluid going in one side and then again you are uh, sending the cold fluid through this so that it exchanges the heat now, there are different configurations again you have the hot fluid always because when this is very close to this it always picks up the heat and uh, cold air goes out as a warm air and then the typical uh, instrumentation is always in control of the temperature you have the tem temperature transmitter being sensed at the outlet temperature and then the inlet temperature you are mentioning at the uh, you have a flow transducer um, uh, which is sending you the uh, flow one flow and the product then heating medium your this can be steam which is a heating medium this can be your feed which is going out as a product but within this you are so you can either control the product flow uh, by sensing the temperature of this and then again control the temperature indicator controller which controls the product uh, uh, flow okay just by sensing either the inlet temperature or the outlet temperature both are given to temperature indicating controller and this fluid is basically controlled uh, if, the, if the more heating medium is going in more heat is in less heating medium is going in less heat is imparted this then you have a feedback control where you have a steam coming in uh, and a steam going out after imparting the heat then you have a process fluid in process fluid out so you have a temperature uh, transducer here which is given to temperature controller and accordingly it uh, you know controls the inlet of the steam this is exactly what we call it as a feedback control then we have a feed forward control where the same st steam you are sensing the flow and the temperature and giving to a temperature controller then uh, you have a flow control of the steam in that exactly goes out but whereas you are not taking any process fluid out you are not taking any um, temperature measurement at the process uh, fluid outside that's the reason why it is called as a feed forward control then you have a cascade control you are again uh, like a feedback control you are sensing at the process fluid outside giving it to a temperature controller uh, and uh, then uh, you, you are controlling the steam input so cascade control and this almost same except that you know you also have a uh, flow control of the uh, you are measuring the flow and then controlling the inlet of the steam to the heat exchange this is a kind of an integrated controller where you have the by taking the feedback uh, from here you are giving it to the flow of the process fluid in and you are also uh, sensing the um, flow of the steam in then uh, you are uh, giving the set point based on the controller flow controller it sets in the steam that is going into the heat exchanger that's exactly about uh, um, the typical uh, working of heat exchangers and the instrumentation and control associated